Greetings traveler and welcome to another one of my speed builds. So for today our travels bring us to Oasis Springs and we're building a traditional Syrian or Damascene house with a modern touch. If you've been around here since my no CC days then you probably remember a certain house that I did probably in the end of last year. I also did a Syrian house but it was CC free so this one is like an improved version of it. So if you want to watch my other Syrian house I'm gonna link it for you but um, it had some like copyright issues with the music so I had to replace all of it and I have no idea how the video sounds now after replacing all the music because I'm pretty sure that most of the voiceover was gone with the music so if the voiceover doesn't make sense in that video that is why uh, don't say I didn't warn you I have no idea how it sounds like but yeah, let's get into today's video and since most of the voiceover was gone for my last Syrian house, I'm gonna like repeat some of the information that I said back then. Um, just like some general information about traditional Syrian houses and just some information about our culture. Um, because if you don't know, I am half Syrian. I probably mentioned this a lot before, but some of you here might be new and don't know that. So, about Syrian courtyard houses. They are famous for having no windows at all on the outside. So, I kind of broke the rule here and I added windows all over because, well, it's it's not like attached to other houses like traditional Syrian houses would be because those are in the city and they are attached to other houses from all sides so that's why they don't have any windows because all the houses are attached wall to wall so that's why they have a courtyard to allow some light and some air inside and to have their windows there. But since this house is in Oasis Springs and it has nothing attached to it, I decided to add windows because otherwise the wall would look too bland and boring. So yeah, uh, this isn't how a Damascene house would normally be, but it is in this case. Other than that, uh, the exterior of this house and the courtyard are pretty accurate, as accurate as you can go in The Sims 4. Um, I pretty much followed traditional houses to a T, and I'm gonna talk you through that in a bit. For the exterior of this house, I used um, mostly the growth set, especially for the windows and the doors, the growth set by Felix Andre. And for the walls, I went for the Harlux wall for the first floor or the ground floor. And I think the stones on the second floor are from the Paris set. I know they're Parisian, but they are pretty similar to Arabic stone stone walls, so that's why I use those here. And I forgot to mention this, I'm not gonna do a full voiceover today because the video is too long and because I mentioned this before, but I wanna go back to my old style of voiceovers, so I'll see you back in a bit. Thank you. 
are now in the courtyard and this part I'm doing right now is called the E1 and this is like the summer living room. This is where all the family gathers during summer and sometimes where they receive their guests. And it's usually like it has walls from three sides but one side is open to the courtyard which allows a nice flow of uh, summer breeze to go inside. For the floors, I didn't want to use the ones that come with the Courtyard Oasis kit, so I did like this custom flooring, mixing the growth set from Felix Andre and one of Harry's floors, I forgot what's the name of the set. And for the walls, most Syrian courtyard houses have this typical striped wall that comes in two or three colors and we have nothing like that in the game like I don't think there's even CC for those kinds of walls so I kind of did my own custom walls using some trims from Felix Andre and these took forever to put in place because there are a lot of them like you have no clue how long this took me but in the end I managed to get this traditional Syrian courtyard look and I'm so pleased with how it turned out this is definitely my favorite part of the house I am obsessed with it so much that I took so many screenshots and in Syrian courtyards you would usually find a lot of plants and a couple of trees so I did add two trees in here and a lot of plants. For the kitchen, I did a sort of a separate situation here. One part of it is traditional, which is this part here, and the other part is pretty modern. The main inspiration for this was that I had two new kitchens that I wanted to use so bad. So that's how I use both of them. One of them is the um, SH. KR kitchen by Tuds, which is absolutely beautiful, gorgeous. It's probably my favorite kitchen ever, and I'm so grateful that Tuds made it like seriously, it's amazing. And the other kitchen is the MCM kitchen by Pierre Sim, which as you can see has a more modern look. And what I really love about the kitchen is this burnt orange or brown color. I absolutely love it. And you can also see a small separated area to the right of the kitchen here and that is a pantry or this is what would have been used as a refrigerator or like simply a storage room for your food 
back in the old days when they didn't have electricity and that was typical in these type of houses they would have a cold or not cold a cool room where they would store their foods and their produce and they would choose the coldest room in the house for that so that the food wouldn't go bad You're gonna see me use these grove arches a lot to separate the rooms into sections. So I did that in most of the rooms. Uh, this here is the living room and I used a lot of Rustic Sims and S Imagination here. I am in love with how this room turned out. You're probably going to hear me say this a lot, but I absolutely love the mix of traditional Arabic elements with these more modern elements. I don't think this is something that you would see in these Syrian courtyard houses, but I just really wanted to create my own design for this. This one is like a traditional Arabic living room or guest reception room, 
Um, I've seen something like this uh, when I was in Syria. They would have um, like this raised platform. Um, I'm using Sims language for this. So you would find these raised platform wrapping all around the room. And in front of the platform, you would find traditional Arabic seatings, which are just a bunch of cushions and pillows that are directly on the floor. So it's almost like seating, sitting on the floor, but it's slightly more comfortable. But I didn't do that here. I went for these sofas that match those tiles. And now we are in the dining room which also has its own entrance. And I did use the biggest dining table CC I have, which is the Gothic dining table, I believe, from Felix Landry. And it fits 12 cents on the table. So this is perfect for a Syrian household, especially if they're having family over. Syrian families are huge, so yeah, you need at least 12 dining chairs. And I also placed a bar in here for your sims who are into mixology. Syrian bedrooms in traditional houses are built in a way where they serve as a living quarters for the person that sleeps in there. So they kind of have a bedroom and a living room and everything going on in the same room. So yeah, you can totally live in your own bedroom, except that it's probably just missing its kitchen and bathroom, but other than that, uh, these bedrooms have everything. They have a bed, an area for sleeping, an office, a living room with a TV, and even a little library section, and a walk-in like closet slash dressing room. This is supposed to be another summer living room and I really wanted to use this fountain from the Courtyard Oasis kit so I placed it here and I also used a daybed from Alexandre's Kyoto set because that's definitely something you would see in a Syrian house. I can just totally see the Syrian dad sleeping or having a nap during the daytime there. And we actually have four bedrooms in this house. One is for the parents, which you just saw earlier, and we have three bedrooms for the children. I made one of them for either a teenager or a young adult, and the other two are for children. But if you want toddlers, you can totally just replace one of the beds or most of the beds into toddler beds depending on how many toddlers you want and you don't have to change anything else except the beds and the bed frames. This is 
the creative room. This is where they paint and make sculptures, which you can't do in The Sims, but we can pretend that you can. And I also put a piano here. And there's also a little section in the back, which is like a library for a writer. There are bookcases and a desk that I think of as a writer's desk. I absolutely love it. I also put a typewriter in there, but it's not functional. However, if you like want to pretend to have a functional typewriter, you can totally use the one that comes with cottage living. This is the only bathroom that I'm going to film myself building, which is good because it's my favorite bathroom. But you can see the other bathroom in the tour in the end. And the third bathroom I actually forgot to take screenshots of, so I'm sorry about that. But you're going to see it, of course, if you download this build. It's like a more traditional type of bathroom. And you're gonna find the tree files for my build on patreon for free as usual there is a link in the description and this is the teenage or young adults room that i'm talking about and one thing i love here is that i combined the wardrobes from the basic set by harry and felix andre with these beautiful bookcases from the octave set by harry and i love how they turned out So this is the last children's bedroom. I can totally see this as a toddler's room as well. So if you want to transform one of the bedrooms into a toddler's room, this is the one for you. And now we are in the last room, I believe. I didn't know what to do with this one. We have a bunch of things going on. So this section here is like the wellness center. There are some yoga mats, massage table, and a massage chair. And the section in the back is like the home gym where your sims can work out and this little room here is for the sauna and i also add a small laundry room so yeah that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed this i hope you like this house and i hope you learned a thing or two about traditional syrian houses and if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet then please consider subscribing i upload every monday and friday and i'll be seeing you in my next one thank you for watching bye
Thank you. 